Oh boy. Check it. Check it. Hopefully today we can get some more progress on that blue beauty over here. But check this out. Reagan and I actually have this drag that the property owners before us left. And it's for dragging the arena. We didn't think we were gonna be able to drag the arena with this, with the zero turn, because it's a lot heavier than it looks. It's pretty freaking heavy, actually. Um, but turns out, it drags the arena just fine. Got the wifey here, and we're gonna be doing a little video here together for a second in a bit. But look at all this work and all this effort to get this crap off and all this other stuff. And meanwhile, I had no idea how easy it actually would be to take this fender off. Take these two bolts out right here. Disconnect these two right here, just so this disconnects. And then seriously, it's just these two up on top, which are really easy to take out. And then there's two in the bottom right there. One right here, one right there. And it just comes out, I had no idea. So we're gonna get this taken off real quick. It's just gonna be like, pretty easy now that somebody saved me so much time. You got some other things that connect to the yeah, I can't really like put it back on now. Oh, just that. Okay. Oh, okay. That's it. That was actually pretty nasty. Okay, but here's the thing though. I took the absolute most difficult way to get this thing off and you know who you are, but I think there was one guy that commented under the video of me and saying, you know, I'm tearing apart my first gen. He's like, you do know that there's two bolts under the fender and then that whole core <laughs> support comes loose and then you just have to pop off the others above the headlight and then you're done. I'm like, you're kidding. He's like, no, and then you don't have to do it. You're cutting and crap. So I'm like, oh, great, you know, nice. Anyways, this was still way faster than trying to grind it all off. And then, yeah, bunch of dumb, dumb, steps of the way that you didn't have to do. So anyways, here's the actual way to do it. It's just undo all the bolts. You don't have to grind off anything. If you just take the whole support off and the fender as one piece, it's way easier. And then you just put a whole new factory fender support, um, fender and all that stuff and just bolt it back on after it's painted to the color of your truck. Just save yourself a lot of time. Quick little update on the blue first shed. It took me about three hours to get three bolts out of the bed. I think somebody put Loctite on there because the bolts had like this blue, like cement paste crap on the threads. And so they are like horrible to get out. And I did buy a new air gun. Let me come show you that. Freaking brooming in here like I'm Cinderella. Here's the air gun I got, just a little Harbor Freight. It was actually like 130 bucks. Just your basic forward, reverse, and then it's got a dial in here to select your Basically, I don't know how much pressure is available to the gun to for bolt breaking power. Anyways, um, yeah, so I bought that, but my spare fittings are not here. They're at my dad's property in his barn. There was a few boxes that we didn't bring over that we were supposed to, and that's one of the boxes that I forgot to bring over was the spare fittings for air tools. So that's great. And the only reason why I need to buy this because I lost my other one somewhere in the moving process. It just disappeared. Like it's not at their property. It's not in their shop when I used it a couple times. It's not in the bed of a truck. Hopefully it turns up because that was like a hundred some dollar air gun. Um, nothing crazy, but it worked just fine. And it would kind of suck to just lose it. So anyways, that's where we're at with that. And actually, here's the progress of the last bolt that I got out. Yeah, snapped. And the goal today was to get the bed off, put the new white bed on. We just didn't get to it. I worked on it for like three hours and it was just, these bolts are just horrible. I'm not gonna do these all with this little 3 8 hand wrench. So I'm gonna actually have to go get the fittings for this. I can use the air gun to not make it a full day chore because it's just a pain in the butt. We are gonna have to finish the shop, but here's what we're trying to debate. I need to be able to have a pulley in here, which we're also gonna show you some of that stuff in a bit. We wanna put it here or like over here. I'm thinking probably here for a pulley just because there is a post right here that is notched to where worst comes to worst, there is some support underneath this beam here if we actually need it and you know, it's at all straining or something for some reason. All we would use it for is like lifting beds off to hold them up temporarily to pull a truck out and put another truck under it and put the beds back on or swap beds or 
I don't know, you guys get the idea. Just for lifting beds, pretty much. We're not gonna be pulling engines. But, so that's kind of an idea is to put something here. Dad said he would suggest reinforcing it with some other boards, some real big heavy duty boards on both sides of this uh, main beam here that goes from this post basically to that post over by the stalls and run bolts through on both sides to like sandwich that main beam here, this bottom one, to kind of give it some more integrity. Because if you look here, this is just kind of like staple pressed together right here in the center. All the weight kind of like keeps it all together. Um, and that's just there to keep the boards pretty much aligned with each other where they're supposed to be. But I wouldn't want to just throw a hoist on that and just start putting a bunch of weight on it just because that's not a good idea. It might do fine, but we're not going to try. So the next thing I'm going to show you is this, this arena drag. I kind of showed you in the beginning of the video the fact that uh, the arena drag does work. Reagan actually used it a little bit this morning. But let me kind of demonstrate how it, it does work. And this is just for people that might be interested in seeing something like this. But essentially, all it is is a basic like triangular shaped uh, angle iron form with a bunch of like steel rods. All they did was they put another piece of angle iron across the middle so that you could set some bricks on there to be able to actually put a little bit of weight on it. The guy that we bought the property off of said, you can try to use a mower, but our mower didn't work for it. We had to use an ATV. Like, I wouldn't do it. You know, the mower's not gonna work well. They had a riding mower with the engine in the front and pretty much no weight in the back. And they're not very torquey. Those riding mowers, it was a cheaper one. Yeah, the kindest way I can say it is they kind of suck for like any kind of pulling capability for like, dead weight like this even though this is just sand so it's not like it's tilling ground it's just this actually does just fine it doesn't spin out it doesn't get stuck nothing so i'm going to show you how that works just for a little bit here so I mean, it's not like amazing, but it works. And another item that we picked up today was this, a one ton chain hoist, because like I was telling you about that whole reinforcing the rafter sort of thing by that post so we can actually use it to like pull beds. Well, I got two 20 foot chains so that we can have a few connecting points to where we can actually lift the beds and then uh, hook it in the center point with the hoist and be able to just pull it up and lift them off the trucks. Is it the absolute best? No, you can get like the remote, you know, actual electric hoist so that you don't have to like pull a chain and all that crap, which probably would have been a lot nicer. But this was like 65 bucks and it's gonna do just fine for what we're gonna do because we don't lift beds all the time. I'd say like two or three times a year, we might be like, oh, let's use the engine hoist. So I don't know, it'll meet the needs for what we gotta do with it. My most important thing, like most concerning thing right now is getting hydrant moved to the barn, finishing the steel on the ceiling, figuring out where we're gonna put this so that we leave an opening for the hoist to go over. Um, and then also like getting the concrete done. And then we actually wanna talk to you guys about another option that we might be doing here for the concrete, just so you guys have an idea of what we're doing. Another thing that we had in mind is not only are we gonna try to concrete the shop soon, but we're thinking about doing the shed. And also in addition to the shed, this whole area back here. And the reason for that is I wouldn't mind there being concrete like from the barn squared to each side of the barn basically. And then bringing it straight out. Probably to about here, straight across and then back. And the reason for that is I wanna be able to park the trucks behind the shop, kind of out of sight, out of mind from people driving down the road. It's not a huge deal, but there are a lot of people that slow down when they see the truck sitting out front because like we got the nice first gen out front, we got that really nice 7.3 out front, we've got the Cadillac and fourth gen, like we've got nice trucks just sitting out by the road, literally within like feet of the road because that's where our parking is. So I want to be able to have parking for the trucks that we're not currently like working on or using for anything, like the 7.3, we're kind of waiting for the whole lockdown BS to kind of like pass over so that, you know, Kayla can come get her truck and get her cash that she won, but it doesn't need to sit up by the road. So it'd be nice to be able to actually have a place to park it, you know, out of sight, like back here. Same with the first gen, like we're really not doing a whole lot with that truck. We're kind of running the giveaway for it right now, which by the way, if you want to enter to win that red and white first gen, Every $5 is 10 entries only until April 8th, which is in two days. We're not doing a whole lot with it. I'm not daily driving it. So it'd be nice to hide it back here versus sitting up by the road. And every truck guy that drives by is like slows way down, rolls their window down, looking at it. 
we've had people stop by several times and just kind of taking a good glance at it and stuff so it's just kind of one of those things where i'd rather hide it so that it's like okay clearly it's not out by the road so you're not going to get out of your vehicle and walk around here walk around our barn looking at it so it'll just keep people moving along that type of deal i just like privacy i don't want people to be nosy and then also just to make it look more finished more clean back here i'd rather it be concrete and cleaned up i know it's expensive and it'd probably be like an extra five grand just to do this whole spot back here but i think long term we'd be happier with it for like washing trucks parking trucks stuff like that i just feel like we'd like it a lot more long term here's the next segment of the video that um is actually pretty exciting it has to do with perosian account and diesel babe as a brand and as a company taking it to the next level because i know that like when we first met diesel babe wasn't a thing but her wanting to do her own truck gig was a thing and nothing's happened between us there's nothing weird going on it's just one of those things where actually i brought up the idea to her I was like, how about you turn Diesel Babe into a sweepstakes company? And she's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, well, you would do truck giveaways right alongside me. I'm doing truck giveaways and you do truck giveaways. I'm like, I honestly think if you brought that into the picture and you did that as a daily thing, like, you know, you filming, picking up your truck and doing stuff to it and customizing it, like with the anticipation that one of your viewers is going to win it. I really think you can take Diesel Babe as a brand to a whole nother level. Not only help the brand out, but help her build out, help her business out, and just enable her to do more as well. And let me kind of explain the whole giveaway process to you guys. The whole giveaway thing, how it works for us, everybody does it for their own reasons, and whatever they wanna do, that's cool. When I was 17, I think it was 17 when I started Loud and Proud, when I was 17 I started Loud and Proud, it was like a cool little hobby, like, oh, this is so cool, I can make videos and I can make like 1500 bucks a month, oh my gosh. And for people that think, oh my gosh, well that's a ton of money for just making videos, well, it was fun as a teenager, but it's like, okay, I didn't have any bills to pay. All I had was my truck insurance, my truck fuel, and basic truck maintenance if something were to go wrong. And like randomly I would do like little light bar accessories or little headlight upgrades or like just little goofy stuff, but I didn't really... I didn't really have any extra money to do anything other than like just survive and keep my channel alive and that was pretty much it. Like I was in no position to like go buy a house, be able to pay all these bills and take care of a family. None of that stuff. None of that stuff was even like a possibility at that time with how much money my channel was actually making. That really varies because there's some channels that are huge that don't really make any money and then there's channels that are smaller and they have a really high CPM and they make a lot of money. It really all just varies. That's when I started doing the truck giveaway thing in the first place because I'm like, okay, I really want to do this. Like I enjoy doing it, but we've got to be able to make enough money to keep doing it. Otherwise you can't do it as a business, like as a livelihood, as a way of income unless it makes enough money to pay the bills. If it doesn't pay the bills, you can't do it. That's why I started doing the truck giveaway thing before I even knew who Reagan was or knew her at all. She actually entered in on my first one or one or two giveaways, my first or second it was giveaway. Where you're giving the dually and the uh... flatbed, I thought. Yeah, nasty red. Yeah, she was actually a fan and she entered in on one of my giveaways at the time. The reason I started it is because I was like, okay, I want to be able to do this, but I've got to be able to make enough money to pay rent somewhere at the time. I've got to be able to pay for insurance stuff, I've got to be able to pay for food to live and eat, you know, I've got to be able to pay for, you know, all this other stuff that I'm like, okay, if I can at least make enough money to pay all my bills and on top of that, make enough money to keep the channel going, which is putting money into like this blue first gen or putting, you know, money into the 7.3 to paint match it and do the grill and do this and do that and all this other stuff or to do another build we have coming up, like all this stuff, it costs money entertainment like this this style of entertainment for this audience of people it costs a lot of money to do ended up blowing up into something way bigger than i realized it was going to be at the time but all that aside that's why i started doing it originally but like for her she's got stuff she wants to accomplish not only with rosine but other projects and other things that she's kind of keeping on the dl and it costs money a lot of money and the problem is I can't like constantly dump out money into Loud and Proud and dump out money into her channel. Take that back, we could do it, but I'd rather save money towards like what we wanna do is like buy real estate and investment properties and stuff like that. That's what we wanna do, that's our goal. I'm like, okay, if you wanna do all this big crazy stuff on your channel, all you're gonna have to do is do something that can enable you to make more money than you are right now so that you can actually put more into that kind of thing. So what's kind of like your thought process on uh you said a lot, so that's I know, I, I said off. a lot. I talked for like four minutes <laughs> okay. straight. First off, when I first met Malachi, I think a lot of people assume that I just go to him and be like, hey, can you buy me this, this, and this for Rosine? But that's not the, like, I don't 
I mean, he'll don't get me wrong. He give me gifts. Yeah. Like, and he'll get me stuff, which is nice. And it, we but we've done like little at a time because it is expensive. And anybody that builds any, even if it's not a diesel, if it's any type of vehicle, you know that a build process is expensive, especially with older vehicles and get a lot more expensive. I mean, I think we dropped seven grand at a diesel shop with because with Rosine because she was having fuel issues. You never really know what you're gonna walk into when you're messing with any older vehicle. You obviously have to have a source of income to be able. to to fuel that passion because it's not just gonna come, you know, out of the blue. Just like horses. I dump stupid amounts of money into horses. So to be able to, you know, to do diesel, to do horses, um, all sorts of stuff that I, you know, hunting, all sorts of stuff that Buy we like to do. Buy extra baby stuff. Yeah, baby stuff. Yeah. I just have to be able to obviously afford all of it. And, um, and just to be clear, when I said extra baby stuff, I'm not talking like she's paying for her pregnancy no, and her birth. That's, that's not clearly I'm paying for that stuff. I'm totally no. cool with that. I love it. Anybody that knows excited. me, I like to spoil the people that are around me. So it doesn't even No, matter. I'm saying like <laughs> if she wants to go above and beyond right. and just blow a ton Which of extra money on cute little stuff, that's, yeah. what I, that's the stuff I'm talking about. And Malachi also knows since the beginning we talked, I have a lot of goals that I want to hit personally and they do require a lot of money. A lot of money. A lot of money. <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> so that's kind of why. Why I can, you know, when he actually brought it up, I considered it because I want to be able to hit those goals. I don't want to just set them and be like, oh, well, that would be nice. I actually want to tackle them while I can, even with the baby in a way. I know some people are like, oh my gosh, go easy. Don't do that. You're going to put too much on your plate. But I rather challenge myself and overdo it rather than whatever. Well, challenge yourself and just know whatever. what you're actually capable but, of versus limiting yourself based on what other people are scared that they couldn't do or thinking yeah. you can't do it. I'm really mostly excited to just be able to build trucks because we both have different tastes and how we do things. I'm not doing Rosine all at once, but once I have the money, you guys will see a lot more done to her. So I'm just super excited to kind of put my taste on stuff, give back to my subscribers and followers as well. I don't think it's necessarily all just about money. Obviously, everybody works for money. I'm really happy just to kind of that's have that feeling because yeah, it's, it's not the same. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, like when we give trucks to people, it's like awesome the opportunity you just give them. Like it could be life changing. Anyways, all that being said, anyways guys, stay tuned. Holy crap, that was a long video. Um, <laughs> if you want to win this first gen, right here, this red and white beast, this beauty, every $5 is 10 entries to win this thing plus $5,000 of cash. So if you want to enter to win this truck, 10X entries end on April 8th, which is in two days. And then those 10X entries are gonna disappear. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully we have more action for you guys tomorrow and get some more content out to you guys. Leave a fat thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment down below, subscribe if you're new. Join the team, join the family, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Kayla from New Jersey won that truck with $5,000 cash, and you could be next with this one. Every $5 you spend gets you 10 entries to win this truck, plus $5,000 cash. It's a 1989 W350 single rear wheel, five-speed manual, four-wheel drive, 12 Alf Cummins, with only 55,000 original miles on it. So if you wanna take this baby home, go to lmpgear.com and get entered today.